You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to GHS Insider, the show that's all about the G. I'm Madison Ricks, and today you'll get an inside look at everything happening at Germantown High School. It's a new school year, so let's find out what's going on around the school. Good morning, Akila. Good morning, Madison. Did you love homecoming week as much as I did? Coming up, I'll talk with our very own SGA president about what else they have planned for the year. Thanks, Akila. Now let's see what Club Kadir Tu Gosma is chatting with this morning in today's club chat. Good morning, Kadir Tu. Hey, Madison. A new club on campus is all about girl power. Find out what members are doing to promote girls around the world in just a few minutes. Thanks, Kadir Tu. We'll see you shortly. And finally, Marikas Lambert is ready to fill us in on the world of sports. Good morning, Marikas. Good morning, Madison. Today in sports, we take a look at football, volleyball, golf, and cross country to find out how their seasons are going. We look forward to all those stories. For some of us, it may be hard to imagine returning to Germantown for our 10th or 20th or even 30th reunion, but that's what the Germantown class of 89 did. GHS insider reporter Kadir Tugasima and videographer Isaac Pierce talked with some of the alumni about returning to the place where it all began. After graduating, the GHS class of 1989 came back to walk the hallways and see their old stomping grounds. I was an SGA and the German club, and I also just attended all of the sporting events. I was a huge fan of everybody's plays and the performances they did. I did musicals and the plays, and I uh, was one of the news anchors on television. I also did the morning announcements. More than 70 people attended the Friday night celebration, which included a tour and tailgate before cheering on the varsity football team. The reunion gave old friends who lost touch over the years a chance to reconnect and catch up. And so it's, it's great to connect with some people that you probably wouldn't have connected with had it not been for something such as this. It's amazing that in, in 30 years of coming back, they still look the same and you can recognize who they are. While some things have changed on campus, the alumni were happy to see that other things remain the same 30 years later. Uh, the gym looks exactly the same, which is kind of crazy. M Annex is now a social studies building. It's kind of cool to see my old classroom and see some of these other classrooms where some of the teachers were. And that's where you kind of bring back the memories of what the place did for you. And the class of 89 is pleased to present Germantown High School with a cash donation. And a reunion wouldn't be complete without cheering on the Devils to victory. Alumni say they're glad the Red Devil spirit lives on in a new generation. You can tell that the kids have spirit. I see a Germantown flag go by and I love the senior t-shirts that you guys are all sporting. I think it's pretty cool. Of course, with being a Red Devil, it's just a lot of pride, um, and it's something that we know we've passed down from generation to generation. Whether you are the class of 1989 or the class of 2020, the memories and friendships made here at GHS will last a lifetime. And there it goes to show where we go or what we do after graduation, we are all Red Devils at heart. Reporting for GHS Insider, I'm Kadir Tugasima. There's always something happening on the GHS campus. Akila Suggs has today's Campus Corner. Thanks, Madison. Before I introduce my guest, here's what's happening around the school over the next month. Tickets for Poplar Pike Playhouse's production of Little Shop of Horrors will go on sale October 1st. Student tickets will be $12. You can buy tickets at the box office or at ppp.org. The show runs October 31st through November 9th. 
Come out and enjoy the show. In today's Campus Corner, I am joined by Senior Hayden Carroll, the President of the Student Government Association. Hayden, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, congratulations on another successful homecoming week. What changes did you make this year? Well, this year, instead of focusing on our hallways being just random themes like China or whatever, um, like different countries, instead we made it all Germantown themed. This year we really want to promote positivity, so we made it all about Germantown. The different grades highlighted the important people in the grades, but yeah. How did you decide the themes for each day? Well, basically we just all voted on them. Um, and we just talked about what we thought we would like and we got teacher input and administration input. SGA is mainly seen during homecoming and Winifrest week, but you do a lot more. Can you talk about what else you do throughout the year? Yes, we also do Make-A-Wish, which is a really big fundraiser for us. Um, a lot of people know about it. So we collect money for Make-A-Wish and we also do the blood drive and a lot of other stuff too. Speaking of Make-A-Wish, you're in the middle of the annual fundraiser. Can you tell us about the fundraiser and how people can donate? Yeah, we're going to be doing donations. We haven't started doing them yet, but um, like the homecoming court, they were doing donations and they collected money as they talked about at the homecoming game. And we'll probably collect during the cafeteria or in classrooms. We haven't decided for sure yet, but yeah. Do you know yet the name of the child who will receive the wish? I do not know, but you guys will know soon. <laughs> SGA is sort of a liaison between students and faculty. Can you tell us more about how that works? Yeah, basically me, since I'm the SGA president, and then the senior class president, Kyla Curry, we go to the PTSO meetings and we get to just tell them what we're doing, any ideas we have, and just basically tell about what the students are thinking and hopefully they can help us out with stuff. Is there a system in place for students to submit questions, concerns, or ideas for upcoming events? Not a formal service um, or system, but they could definitely let us know or they could go see Ms. Thomas um, at the backside of M and maybe we should do that. that was, that's a really good idea. Would you be the main contact person for students to come Definitely, to? but they could go to any of the SGA officers. Okay. How would they find out who the SGA officers are and where they can find them? Uh, outside of Ms. Thomas's door and Ms. Greer's door, there's a piece of paper that has them on it or they can just come see me, you know. I'm always cool with people coming up to me, so, yeah. Where can they find you, and what times? Um, well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> um, just throughout the school day, if they see me passing by, just say, hey, Hayden, and hopefully I'll hear them, <laughs> and just whenever. So, yeah. Is there a way for the students to submit questions for specific events, like for Winterfest themes or homecoming days? Generally, we just talk to them. Like, we'll be like, oh, hey, what are you guys thinking? But definitely, they could come to us, or maybe we'll start doing something like a ballot or something like that, that would be good. Well, Hayden, thank you for talking with us about the SGA. Thank you so much. Now, I'm gonna send it back to Madison. Great interview, Akila. Time now for a little history lesson. Here is Alexa Morris with today's Moments in History. Today's Moments in History. On this day in 1779, the American Continental Congress appointed John Adams to negotiate peace and commerce treaties with Great Britain during the Revolutionary War. Working out of Paris, he was able to negotiate highly favorable terms for the United States following the end of the war in 1783. In 1908, Henry Ford's first Model T automobile left the Piquette plant in Detroit, Michigan. Although Henry Ford started with the Model A, it was the Model T that put Ford on the map. The Model T was the first mass-produced automobile and was named the most influential car of the 20th century. Finally, in 1935, Mammy Peanut Johnson was born. She was a trailblazer. She was one of three women to play the Negro League and was the league's first female pitcher. That's it for Moments in History. I'm Alexa Morris. 
Every year before school starts, members of the GHS marching band prepare for the upcoming year. These couple of weeks that they take out of their summer sets the stage for how the year will go for the band. GHS insider reporter Jelana Moody and videographer Richard Woodley give us an inside look at Germantown's annual band camp. Marching band really is a sport because it does take an entire team. While the football team was practicing drills this summer, the Red Devil Varsity Marching Band was also preparing for the football season during their annual band camp. Spending four hours today and tomorrow and then next week, we go eight hours a day for five days. It's a tremendous amount of work. Get ready for the, uh, the marching band season. We usually do a lot of stretches, working on building core muscles, working on marching together. Not only are the band members learning to march together, the color guard is there learning routines and rehearsing with the marching band. So we are working on learning technique and fundamentals of color guard. So we're working on ballet moves, modern dance, contemporary dance, uh, flag basics. Besides reinforcing the fundamentals of marching band, band camp is also a time for bonding between members. It creates a social environment so that people can meet other band members. Just think about it. You're in the middle of a performance. Something itches. You can't stop and scratch it. You are able to listen to authority figures, learning and retaining knowledge that you won't get to see every day when you see it. The annual camp not only helps band members prepare for the new season, it also helps the new section leaders get comfortable in their leadership roles. It's a lot of being the, I don't want to say the adult, but being the adult, knowing what you have to do before somebody has to tell you to do it. It's a lot of trial and error. Priscilla, then your shoulders are the last thing to face the uh, sideline. Good job! As section leaders, the students make sure that any problems in their section are fixed and that everyone is competition ready. So we have to teach rookies uh, how to stay still at attention, not looking around, using a uniform position. The hard work put in during the summer pays off during the school year. Instead of learning new pieces, the band can focus on polishing their halftime and competition routine. You have to have these full day rehearsals to be able to put everything together. Without that, to try to put it together during the school year would be impossible. And it does take a lot of training because you have to be able to play your instrument on the field without sounding bad. And the way to work on that is to work on your stamina and endurance. So that's why we have band camp. Reporting for GHS Insider, I'm Jelana Moody. Great report, Jelana. Time now for Club Chat. Girl Up is an international organization focused on giving girls in developing countries an equal chance at an education. Lily Roberts is in charge of the GHS chapter, which started this school year. Lily, thank you so much for being here with us on GHS Insider. So Lily, could you tell us about the Girl Up's mission and how this chapter started here at GHS? Yeah, so Girl Up, its aim is to empower girls through education. And kind of the tagline for the club is that GHS Girl Up teaches girls that they can dream big and achieve even bigger. So to start it here at the club, um, I found some sponsors. Uh, Dr. Collins, Ms. Campbell, and Ms. Nelson are our three sponsors. And in April, I created a board application. So we had girls uh, go through this application. They did a phone interview with me. And then we started having, having board meetings in May, doing programming over the summer. And then we came back second week of August, did our second inches meeting. And now that's just how we got the ball rolling. So this is the only chapter in the Memphis area. Have there been any challenges that this club has faced? Uh, definitely. Every club has its challenges. So part of the uh, challenge is that this is the first time a club like this has happened here. So one thing we do is Girl Up is a lot about fundraising, right? And so in order to send the money to Girl Up, we need to have them be a sponsor. We need to go through different bureaucratic things. So the main challenges have been just like going through all these steps, but really all the support, all the momentum is here. So if a person wants to donate right now, how could they do that? Go to www.girlup.org. And then there's a little donate button in the corner. Click that, change a girl's life. So how many members does this club here have at GHS? So we're still collecting dues, but basically we have around 40 members. So we've had two, uh, two interest meetings and one club meeting so far, as well as some socials. But at the interest meetings, we've averaged about 40 people to come, which is really impressive as the first time this club is here. Are there any plans to recruit more members? Of course. If at any time you want to join Girl Up, do it. Just come talk to me, talk to any of the officers, talk to our sponsors, whatever. 
come join us. And we have a few plans in the works for doing some citywide events because I know there are girls at other schools, they really like Girl Up, but they don't necessarily want to start a club. So why not have those girls get involved? What has been the most impactful part of being a part of Girl Up? That's a tough question because like, I love all of it, but I think the most impactful part has been seeing how it's affected the community. So being, standing up there in that interest meeting, you know, when you're coming up with it, you, you have a plan in mind. You're like, this is how I think it's going to go. But really to see the girls, see how they come in, the guys too, how they come in and how their attitudes change by the time they leave, to hear their stories about why they want to be there, to see their energy for doing it. So I think the most impactful part is always a girl coming in and being like, I didn't think I could do this, but I just did. Being the president and all, why did you want to be in charge of this? So I saw, f there are a few reasons why I want to be in charge. So, well, the first is that obviously I have a passion for feminism. I have a passion for gender equality. And so I want to help girls in other countries achieve the same access to education we have here, because I've seen in my own life that's helped me become successful. But why I, another reason why I want to start it was because I saw there was a lack of leadership training at Germantown. So the previous senior class, they were great, but I personally felt that they, they didn't necessarily train the younger members to step up and take over those clubs. And so what I really want to do with Girl Up, with the board, with the members themselves, is to take girls who didn't have experience with that leadership and kind of teach them that you don't have to be born a leader, that you can become one. And so I really want to start that to get, get the structure for Germantown. Well, Lily, thank you so much for joining us on GHS Insider, and good luck on Girl Up. Thank you. Now let's get an update on the world of sports here at Germantown. Here's Marikas Lambert. Hey Red Devils, after a disappointing loss last week, the football team is looking to turn things around tonight in a game against Father Ryan High School. The season started off promising with a big 50-0 win over Kip Collegiate, but three straight losses showed us the team is still trying to find a rhythm on the field. New head coach Tommy Farrell and his staff have been working with the team since the beginning of the summer, but everyone admits there is a learning curve. It's a new era uh, and it's, it's going to be different. And, uh, you know, obviously we'd like to win as many games as they've won here and as many games as I won at my previous school. The football team travels to Nashville today to take on Father Ryan. If you are going, kickoff is at 7 p.m. We are well into the volleyball season and the Lady Red Devils are bringing the heat. Despite a rocky start at the beginning of the season, the team is focused on getting the SCI AA Championship next month. They've had bright spots in the season, like their 3-0 victory over Southwind. Although there are some rookies on both the JV and varsity teams, the players say the team dynamics are better than past years. A lot of challenges that we face in volleyball are um, trusting our teammates, um, being able to see where the ball is on the other side, and trying to see where the other team, where our other teammates are in order for them to get the ball or if we should get the ball at this time. The girls are back on the home court Monday night for senior night. JV takes on Cordova at 5 p.m., followed by the varsity game at 6 p.m. Come out and support the seniors. Moving on to golf, the GHS team has been hitting the links since school began, playing the matches all over the city. Right now, the team is focused on rebuilding after losing several seniors last year. It's been tough because golf is not an easy sport to master. However, the team is up for the challenge when it comes to rebuilding a winning team. Well, this year we've uh, got a lot of newcomers, uh, lost a lot of our varsity boys uh, last year. So this year we're just really trying to get them acclimated to the, just the rules and, and the procedures that go on during the course of an event and uh, just hoping they progress as the year gets, gets, gets going a little bit better. The golf team plays again on September 30th. Tee off is at 8 a.m. And last, but certainly not least, the cross country is off to a great season. With 16 runners, new and old, the team is thriving. Veteran players are showing the rookies the ropes, while newer runners are learning proper breathing techniques and form. And all are working hard to improve their endurance and pacing. Our winning strategy is uh, to push ourselves to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, um, push each other, uh, and to always try and catch the runner in front of us. 
Great strategy. The Red Devil Cross Country Team's next match is on October 3rd. It starts at 5 p.m. at Shelby Farms. Don't miss it. That's your look at the world of sports. Madison, back to you. Thanks, Marikis. A GHS English teacher's path to Germantown took an interesting turn. Can you guess who it is? Here's Jelana Moody with today's Who's Who. Hey, Madison. I'm here with Ms. Schlick, the new English teacher here at Germantown. Hi. Hi. How long have you been teaching English? I've been teaching English for a total of 11 years, three years at a different high school, and seven years as a college professor. Many people may not know this fact, but you used to teach at a really interesting place. Can you tell us about it? I can. I used to teach prison. I used to teach English at a prison in which I taught high school equivalency to inmates. What did you take away from that experience? I took away that education can be really entertaining when you have nothing else. Those stories that you guys see, think are kind of boring become very entertaining. What are your thoughts on Germantown since you've been here? Germantown is very exciting. Everyone has such school spirit. Everyone is very engaged. I enjoy it very much. Ms. Schlick, it was great getting to know you. That's it for Who's Who. I'm Jelana Moody. Madison, back to you. Thanks, Jelana. Before we leave you, have you met Blaze? Blaze is the new Red Devil mascot. He made his football debut earlier this month and has been helping the cheerleaders keep the crowd energized. Blaze went through a rigorous audition and trained with the Grizz Girls before hitting the field. While his student identity is a secret, what can you tell you is he will be at most sporting events, not just football. So keep a look out for Blaze and don't be afraid to ask for a picture. And that leads us to our question of the day. We ask you what you thought of Blaze. That's it for us at GHS Insider. We'll see you next time. I had no idea we had a new mascot. Our mascot, our mascot is Blaze. But it kind of looks scary to me because it looks like a real devil. We don't like a mascot. I think he's super cool. Well, it's a good idea. It really does help with school spirit because not only does it kind of hype the crowd up, but it goes with our school. It's the Red Devil. It makes it seem like we have like a lot of school spirit, which we do. I think it's really good to give like our team kind of like a central face. So instead of it being like a player, we have this mascot who's going to be here for years and years. And everybody can like, you know, see him. Oh yeah, the new the new devil that y'all live, that y'all live, that y'all lit, that y'all lit.